According to documents obtained by the Brennan Center for Justice, LAPD officers have been directed to collect social media handles for every citizen they interview. Officers are instructed to complete field interview cards that record citizens' Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts and their basic biographical information, even if they are not under arrest or accused of a crime. The officers were also warned that their superior officers would review the field interview cards to ensure that they were complete. While leadership within the LAPD has expressed that social media and biographical information is necessary for arrests, investigations, and prosecutions, the practice has raised privacy concerns among activists. It has long been speculated that the LAPD uses such information for predictive policing and the target tracking of specific groups or individuals, whether they are suspected gang members or activists. According to an investigation by the LA Times, more than half of the field interview cards documented as black or Latino were not arrested or cited for any infractions whatsoever, and a substantial number of the cards were falsified. Joining us to discuss is civil rights attorney and New Jersey's second district congressional candidate, Tim Alexander. Mr. Alexander, how is this practice of keeping you know, databases of information on people who have not even been accused of a crime, let alone arrested for a crime, any different than the, than the way that uh, data and, uh, was being kept on people who were stopped and frisked before the, cut, the courts put a stop to it? There, there's, there's virtually no difference. And this is the most excessive uh, form of, of policing that I've heard of in quite a while, in the sense that everyone is a suspect. Everyone's data and information must be collected, even if you don't want to share that information. In other words, we all have names that we typically go by, and we have so, many of us have IDs with those names on there, but we don't have our social media handles on our IDs. We don't wear them on our shirts. That's private information that requires probing and prodding. And this goes again to law enforcement treating everyone who as guilty first until proven innocent. So if, so if a person who is stopped does not want to provide their uh, social media handles, how does the officer get them? Well, they're not supposed to. So, and let's, let's back that up a, a bit. If you're not doing anything wrong, you're just simply walking down the street, minding your business. There is no call reflected of, of say, uh, a six foot six African-American bald guy who uh, fits the description of some crime that just occurred. If an officer asks me to, to stop and he wants to talk to me, I have no obligation to stop and talk to that officer. So now you're taking it even a step further, saying I not only have to talk to you, but I have to give you my social media information. That's absolutely absurd. So what, what is, you know, what can a person who, as you said, walking down the street, doing nothing wrong, uh, committed no crime, officer doesn't tell him that he's committed a crime or that he's being stopped because a crime has been committed in the, in the area, what does that person need to do when he is being stopped? Is it somehow resisting arrest to not stop and talk to the officer, or can they simply walk away? They can simply walk away. Now, if the officer takes it to the next step, I would encourage people not to get hurt, not to, not to uh, put themselves at risk. Just simply note that I have no desire to talk to you. I have not committed any crimes. I'm not answering any questions. What are you going to do? And now if the person is, is being threatened with jail, they have to have the officer explain it to them. Why am I going to, to jail? What crime have I committed? Well, then the response may be, well, you're not cooperating with me. Cooperating you with you with what? What are you investigating? And, and it can't just be me. I'm minding my own business. People need to know their rights. They need to assert their rights each and every time they feel as though their rights are being violated. That will bring an end to this constant uh, cycle of, all right, this didn't work, let's try this. In other words, we had uh, uh, police officers with the stop and frisk. Now we're going to social media. Let me, let me back up a little bit, by the way, and I think it's important to say the vast majority of law enforcement officers are good, honorable people. They don't engage in uh, inappropriate behavior. This is a, 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 a norm, a dysfunctional norm within the department telling them to do something that they ought not be doing. And the bottom line is people need to know their rights and know uh, that they don't have to submit to that. And I, I, 
I venture to guess that someone from an affluent neighborhood in L.A. or or perhaps in Beverly Hills, they're not asking them for the social media handle. Just just to put that out there. So this is data. Data is no doubt going into a database. That data is being analyzed for some purpose and some use. What does the LAPD say the database is being used for and how do they say they can prevent it from being abused? To, 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 the, to the level of that, uh, in depth of that policy, I can't answer that. Uh, you would need a representative from the PD. But I can tell you that typically data is and social media is perfectly fine to scan social media for threats. And what I mean by that is they should have intelligence department that will constantly look for potential threats, such as uh, January 6th or uh, further back uh, 9-11. Uh, that type of information is okay to look for because that's keeping America and, and people in their, their town safe. But to come out and say, I need all your information so I can put it in this database, and on the, under the uh, auspices of, of keeping people safe is absolutely ludicrous and nonsense. As far as the why and what they're doing with this data, I, I have no idea, but it, does, it, it doesn't ring well. Tim Alexander, thank you so much for joining us on this really important story. A quick programming note, on Saturday, BNC has special coverage of the 20th commemoration of 9-11. Join us starting at 8 a.m. Eastern for this somber remembrance 20 years later. We will never forget. More Prime after the break.